Good morning. I just wanted to check and make sure that Karen was done with her beautiful playing. Thank you for that. Welcome to St. John's, all of you that have made it here and of you that are watching on the streaming this morning. This is the first Sunday of Lent. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurt grow into hatred. For all these things and for the sins only you know, Forgive us, Lord. Amen. There is a flood of grace out of love for the whole world. God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you save the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protect your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn of the day is 326, Bless Now, O God, the Journey. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, 
as many as came out of the ark. I have established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirit in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which is this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Please rise if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Be seated. Are there any children today that want to come up for a children's sermon? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the first day of Lent. I apologize. Oh, these bags are so heavy. Sorry about that. You 
You know, we carry a lot of weight with us every day, baggage. We live in a society where we feel anger, sadness, happiness, fear, resentment, envy, guilt, and we can feel that all in one day? Is that even possible? Daniel Castle was an associate at LPL Financial. He was to attend a conference in California the week of 9-11. He was to tentatively fly out of Boston on an 8 a.m. flight to LA. My boss had come to me, he said, and told me that he did not want me to go on the trip. I was devastated. He wondered, was I not doing a good job at work? Was he not happy with me? I was so angry that he selected my coworker instead of me for that business trip. That resentment and anger stuck with him for the three weeks prior to the flight. The morning of 9-11, Daniel woke still feeling bitter about that conference that he wanted to go to. He got to work and he was at his desk and somebody came around and said, oh, you are here. And they marked him as alive. He said, what is going on? What are you doing? And he heard of the tragedy. He should have been on that flight. He said, at that moment, I felt relief, sadness, guilt, anger, fear, and self-pity. It was like a giant weight was laid upon him. He felt like he could not breathe. Numerous phone calls from friends and family poured in. He escaped death. Why? I can't imagine what he was feeling. Please pray with me. Almighty God, as we gather in your house on this first Sunday of Lent, we pray that you open our hearts and minds to not only hear your word, but to live by your word in our daily lives. In your name we pray. Amen. So 9-11 was one of the biggest tragedies in our country's history. These stories, like Daniel, are unfortunately numerous. These emotions are raw and present. Depression, suicidal thoughts, PTSD, these are just a few of the feelings those survivors felt and feel today. Of course, family members are grateful. They have their loved ones. But the people, the survivors, do not reciprocate those feelings. I'm so grateful that here in the tiny town of Marion, city of Marion, we do not have and not have to endure something so tragic. But I can guarantee that every one of you have felt fear, perhaps awaiting an upcoming doctor's appointment, a math test, a meeting with your boss? Have you felt envy for others? Their house, their possessions, cars, bank accounts? Have you felt anger when driving, when somebody cuts you off? Have you felt guilt for not being completely honest with your family or letting your kid down when you didn't show up for that game? Have you felt self-pity because you feel that you are the only one enduring hardship? We have all felt these feelings, and they do become so overwhelming. It is like carrying around extra baggage every day. I do want to reflect back on the gospel that I read today, because Mark tells of the baptism of Jesus and how God came to him, the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. Is this not a depiction of our daily lives? I believe that the wilderness is out beyond these doors of St. John's. Our society is full of wild beasts, terrorists, rapists, criminals. Every corner we turn, Satan is there trying to tempt us. Our sins, they're carried with us, clouding our hearts and our minds. As Christians, we are provided the opportunity to repent our sins and start anew. The season of Lent, it's a time of preparation 
reflection, fasting, repentance, and prayer. Perhaps you are one that practices fasting during Lent. Maybe you have decided to cut out fast food, sweets, soda, tobacco, and the list could go on and on. The true art of fasting for Lent, however, is to give up that item and replace it with prayer. So if you were going to be having a cupcake, instead of that, having that cupcake, we're going to pray. I typically do not choose fasting, and I have not. However, this year I am. I am going to give up fear and worry. I spend most of my nights worrying about things that are out of my control. This has been my norm since I was little, and my family can vouch for it. I live with anxiety, and sometimes my thoughts are overpowering. Sometimes I question why I picked nursing as a career choice. Somebody like me, if I have a headache, it's got to be a brain tumor. If I have a cough, it's got to be pneumonia. If I have a headache, it's an aneurysm. All these different things. I have every disease imaginable. My poor husband, Kurt, <laughs> has to put up with so much from me. However, as I'm writing this today, I thought, why? Why am I not turning to prayer when I have those thoughts, those feelings? I need to redirect my focus. God will calm my fears, provide me with peace and comfort. I challenge each of you to give up an emotion, a feeling that is weighing you down. Lessen the load and the burden and turn to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in prayer. Reflect and repent. Start anew with a cleansed heart and an open mind. As the gospel stated, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. Please join me with prayer. Dear God, let us lay our burdens down and come to you in prayer. Let us start anew and cleanse our hearts and open our minds as we prepare for the journey of Lent. Let us give thanks and reflect upon all the gifts we have today, as tomorrow is not promised. In your name we pray. Amen.
would invite you to please stand if you are able and join me in confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrections of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers are in my book. Trusting in God's promise, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church. May God enter the hearts of all people. May the leaders of this church serve as examples of your grace and healing. Hear us, O God. God, grant us health and safety. Keep us mindful of any who are homebound, hospitalized, or in need of prayer. Today we pray for Anne, Arnold, Becky, Beverly, Braden, Brian, Clarence, Corinne, Darla, Dave, Dave, David, Denise, Gloria, Jack, Jaden, Jackie, James O, Jerome, Jerry, Karen, Christy, Laura, Mary, Nancy, Nathan, Patty, Rachel, and Will. Hear us, O oh God. Healing Father, we pray for the creation, that we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and to care for the animals, planet, air, and bodies of water. Hear us, O oh God. Dear Father, we pray for those cha charged with leadership lawmaking and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Loving Father, we pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the beauty of, our, of your unconditional love and forgiveness. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hear us, O God. And please join me in the last petition. With everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated as we have our morning offering.
Heavenly Father, you have given us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you. But we ask, Lord, that you will bless our offerings and help us to use them wisely in your service and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we go over the morning announcements. First, thank you very much for that wonderful message. That was very heartfelt. And Karen for the beautiful music. Um, Again, thank you to everyone who helps week after week to make their services so enjoyable. Um, a few announcements that I do want to just quickly go over. Um, First communion classes will be coming up. So if you have someone who has not had First Communion, um, please contact the office and we'll make arrangements for you to join that class. Latin breakfasts did start this Thursday, so they will continue every Thursday during Lent. Come enjoy a wonderful meal and a wonderful message. Um, Lenten services every Wednesday, the theme that we are um, using this year is meeting Jesus at the table. So every week they will have a different um, depiction of someone that was at the meal with Jesus. Sounds like a very interesting series that we will be enjoying. Um, the rest, I think you can read. I'm trying to see. And of course, I didn't read this. Oh, there we go. Next time we will have communion is Sunday, February 25th. So if you want to join us on that, that would be wonderful. Um, any other announcements that I may have forgotten? Any birthdays or anniversaries we should be celebrating, Bart? You're always my... Oh, we have a birthday. Well, Mr. Schwan, happy birthday. I have a family that is just pointing at someone in the shy man in the middle. So happy birthday to you. All right, with that, let us receive our morning bless... Or, nope, do we have to sing another song? We have to sing another song. You're not done yet, sorry. Number 860, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Now we will have the morning blessing. Beloved, you are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you and shower you with mercy, fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the bread. Enjoy your week, everyone.